it is 12 noon on Wednesday, which means it's time for this week's episode of Ask the Instructor. I'm John Carissimo, and the show is brought to you by the Tampa School of Real Estate. Every Wednesday, 12 noon Eastern Time, we come to you live to help you understand the technical side of the real estate industry, and that's what we're doing today. We're going to be working through amortization of a mortgage. Now, this is an essential exam question that is one of those types of math that's almost guaranteed to be on any exam it is that you take. It'd be odd if it wasn't, because it's a very standard question, uh, and it is asked about very often as a math question. Now, this one is probably one of the ones that seems seems the most intimidating out of all the math questions. It's probably the longest out of all the math questions to actually solve, but this one actually does make sense when you understand what it is that you're really doing, and when you make sense of it, it's a lot easier to remember. So we're gonna be working through amortization of a mortgage today. If you've got questions on any of this stuff, drop it in the chat. I'm John Chrisman. The show is brought to you by the Tampa School of Real Estate, and you're watching Ask the Instructor. You are watching Ask the Instructor. Absorb the knowledge. Become the expert. Hey, welcome back to this week's episode of Ask the Instructor. I'm John Carismo, and just in case you missed our little intro, today we're doing mortgage amortization. Hey, Logan, can you get that focus on there? I think this looks a little blurry. There we go. Oh, yeah, there we go. Now you guys are going to be able to see here. So, amortization. Now, like I said, this one seems intimidating, but it's actually it makes a lot of sense. Compared to some of the other math questions, it might not make the most sense. This one, it's very real world because we live in a very debt-based society or, or loan and payment-based society where, um, I mean, everyone everywhere probably has some sort of finance, whether, whether it is a mortgage or a credit card or a student loan or something where there's interest being charged. So uh, this is very applicable, and this actually applies in a much wider range of things when you understand what it is that you're doing here. So with amortization, first and foremost, we're just going over the basics first so you understand what's going on here. With a mortgage loan, you know, let's say we've got zero years here, 30 years here. We'll say it's a 30-year mortgage. Lots of money up there, basically no money up there. Now, typically, you'll have what's called a level payment plan mortgage, which means your mortgage payments are the same amount for that full 30 years, for as long as it is that you have the mortgage. But even if your payment is the same exact amount every single month, what happens with amortization is the first few years, really, out of your mortgage payments, you're paying almost all interest as part of the mortgage payment, or at least the big, a huge majority, depending on what the interest rate is and what the payment actually is. But we're going to put the interest here in red. And, you know, it looks something kind of like that. And then the green, that's your, your principal, what actually pays down your loan balance. This red goes to the bank, you never see it ever again. Now the green here, this is what actually pays down your balance. That starts off very small, but as you gradually decrease the loan balance, it ends up where at the end of the mortgage, your payment is almost all principal, whereas in the beginning, it's very little principal and almost all interest. And the reason why that is, is the way the interest is compounded. So whenever it is that you're charged interest, it's based on the current outstanding balance. So with a mortgage, your balance is gonna be the highest. Let's say this loan was, I don't know, let's pick uh, $300,000. So on year one, day one, your loan balance is $300,000 and that interest rate is based off a $300,000 balance. Now let's say after year one, you've paid this down now to let's say 297,000, not a whole lot, but that is less than the $300,000. And as you slowly pay down this mortgage more, you know, maybe here, your mortgage balance is down to 
I don't know, I'm just picking random numbers here, $247,000, and then maybe here, your balance is now $150,000, and then here maybe, it's down to $30,000, and it just keeps picking up speed because you're making much larger payments towards principal, because remember, your payment amount stays the same for that entire 30 years. But at the beginning, your interest rate, let's say the interest rate is 5% on this mortgage, and I don't know if this number checks out, if this is any what um, a real representation of how these numbers would play out over course 30 years, but if the interest rate remains constant throughout the entire loan, Day one, it's based on $300,000. Then when the loan's at $297,000, it's based off of that two hundred ninety-seven. dollars then 5% at $247,000, and 5% of $150,000. So what that means is as your, your balance, your outstanding loan balance, the money it is that you owe in total decreases, that interest, because it's the same interest rate, gets smaller. That payment towards that you have to make towards the interest gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's what we're doing when we're calculating amortization. We start with that big, large loan balance, that full loan balance of the initial loan amount. But even that first payment, it might be a very small amount that's actually going towards paying down the balance. But there is still money going towards that. There is still money that actually is paying down the balance. And it's very small at first. And then when you get towards the end, a large chunk of your payment, the largest chunk of your payment is gonna be really on your final payment. That's where you're gonna have the lowest amount of interest and the highest amount of principal payment. So let's walk through the steps that we have to do to perform amortization. So there's ultimately three steps in calculating amortization. And when you understand what it is that you're doing in each one of these steps, again, this makes a lot more sense to, to how it is that you calculate this out. So step one is find monthly interest. So step one is find the monthly interest. So what you're doing essentially is taking the loan balance, multiplying it by the interest rate, and then dividing that by 12 because what you want to remember is this is an APR. And we're actually gonna work through some examples where we put the numbers of actually calculating this out on the screen. But in case you're already familiar somewhat with amortization and maybe you've done some calculations before on it, you're just trying to get a little bit clearer on it. What we're doing in step one is finding how much of our payment is interest. And we just take the loan balance times the percentage rate and then divide it by 12. And this is the same way that all interest is compounded. So whether you're looking at a credit card or you know a student loan or basically any sort of financial product, once I, and I learned this through learning real estate and learning how to amortize a mortgage, once I realized what we were doing here and what was happening, all of a sudden that missing piece of why I could never figure out how the credit card companies, whatever it may be, figure out interest, it all made sense and through studying real estate. Real estate is pretty neat because there's so much of this that applies in so many other parts of the world and so many other concepts. So number one is you find the monthly interest. And that tells you for that current month, whether it's the first month or whatever month you're doing it based on, what the interest is. But when we're, or when we're amortizing, we're basically trying to figure out what this decrease is gonna look like over time. Now in the real world, when you're not taking your real estate exam, you have access to Google and you can just Google amortization calculator and it gives you a whole table of if it's a 30 year mortgage, 360 months that shows you every single month how much goes towards principal and how much goes towards interest. And it gives you a whole chart like this based on the, the particular numbers it is that you put in for the interest rate, the payment, the loan amount, and, and all those other aspects. And so it's, it's wonderful that we have something like that because this is, it does take some time to figure out amortization. And even if you do do something like that, you do want to understand really what it's doing. So you have an idea of what's going on here with these numbers and you're just not throwing a bunch of numbers or you're not understanding what it, what's going on with them. Um, but essentially, we're trying to get to month number two. If we start out with month number one, great, we found out what the interest is, but our balance will be decreased unless our payment is interest only, which you're not going to see that on your exam. And that is much more rare in the real world to see a loan where the, the payment is only 
the interest of the mortgage. Sometimes it could actually be not even enough to cover the interest and we call that negative amortization where your loan balance actually increases rather than decreases. Um, but you're not gonna see anything like that on your real estate exam if that's what you're studying for. So number one, you find your monthly interest. Then number two, you find your monthly principal payment. So you basically look and see, okay, this is what the payment is. When we subtract out the interest, what's left over is the principal payment. And that word principal, the mortgage sections, it's super important for your exam that you understand the vocabulary. Principal is your loan balance. So this is the payment towards your loan balance. And the exam questions will word this a lot of different ways. They might say what amount will apply to the amortization, which means the gradual decrease of the mortgage. So that's our payment on the principal. Basically, if they're asking for anything other than interest, they're asking about the principal payment because interest, they really only have one word for that and it's interest. Whereas principal payment, they might say principal payment, they might say apply to the amortization of the mortgage or apply to the principal reduction. Um, so if that's the case, then that's the number it is that you're looking for there. But typically what they're having you do on the exam is not just one month of this calculation, but two and possibly even three months of this calculation where they're asking you in month number two or month number three, how much amount is actually paying down the principal balance. And every single month that goes by, this increases, it doesn't really look like it perfectly on here, but it increases ever so slightly. So it's always the lowest amount of principal payment at the beginning of the mortgage, and that increases as time goes on. So it always starts out at the lowest at the beginning. So even going from month one to month two, your interest rate is just gonna slightly drop a little bit and your principal payment is just gonna slightly increase a little bit. And you're gonna see that snowball as we get towards the end of the mortgage as these calculations go out. Now again, fortunately for your exam, you're just calculating this out for usually maybe two months, possibly three. Um, but the good news is if you can do this for one month, if you do it for two months, you can do it for 360 months if you had enough time. But if you really need to go that far, it's not gonna be on your exam. That's where you're just trying to understand this in the real world and you can just Google amortization calculator um, but now there is one final step so again this is a step process number one we're finding the monthly interest number two we're finding the monthly principal payment and then finally step number three we're finding the new balance the new mortgage balance because if we just made a payment on our principal balance on our loan balance if we just made a payment towards that for month number two, we still don't owe $300,000. It's gonna be $300,000 minus whatever that principal payment is. So like I said, this math, once you understand what's going on here, yes, it is a lot of steps. This is probably the most time consuming math question you might get on your exam, but it's an easy point to rack up because once you understand what you're doing here and you can remember these steps and understanding what you're doing in each one of these steps makes it so much easier to remember. Again, this is an easy point to get on your exams. Look, we're gonna take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we're gonna actually throw some numbers into this year um, and actually do some amortization calculations and, and basically just tell you what you need to pull out of the question to figure out amortization for two months, which again, that's a very common question you'll find on your exam. Again, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Stick with us. I'm John Christmas. The show is brought to you by the Tampa School of Real Estate. You're watching Ask the Instructor. If you've been thinking about real estate, look, in this current market, it's hard not to. There's so many opportunities that exist out there for residential real estate, commercial real estate, business brokerage, property management. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous how much opportunity lies from having a real estate license. So look, if you've been thinking about getting a real estate license, I mean, it, it's it's minimal cost compared to starting other careers and starting other businesses to get into this. So I urge you to check it out and, and give it a try. I mean, even if you're just using your license for personal use, you've got huge, immense benefits there. Go to this link, it's licensefl.com. That's licensefl.com put that link in the description. It's got your step-by-step -step guide to get a Florida real estate license. And look, check it out, give us a call. We're here to answer any questions it is that you have and go out there and make some money. Does your current career allow for unlimited income potential? With a career in real estate, the sky is the limit. What you put in is what you get out. 
Find out more about how you can tap into the unlimited income potential of a career in real estate at tampaschool.com. Did you know that statewide, only about 50% of test takers pass their state exam on the first try? At the Tampa School of Real Estate, we've broken down passing the class and state exams into four simple steps. Learning the information, reinforcing the information, testing your knowledge, and being confident and prepared. View the details of the full strategy at PassFirstTry.com. That's PassFirstTry.com. Hey, if you're enjoying the show today, which I'm sure you are, be sure to hit like, subscribe, post your comments, share with your friends and family. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hey, welcome back to this week's episode of Ask the Instructor. I'm John Crispin. The show is brought to you by the Tampa School of Real Estate every Wednesday, 12 noon Eastern Time. We're coming to you live to help you understand the technical side of the real estate industry. And today we're talking about amortization of a mortgage. And this one seems intimidating, but once you dive into it and you understand what you're doing with each one of these steps in the calculation, this is a super simple, um, although lengthy, but simple point to get on your exam. So. We talked about the whole concept of amortization as this gradually decreases. And in case you're just tuning in, remember you can catch the full replay of this at tampaschool.com forward slash success. As soon as the show is over, it's available on demand. And again, that's available at tampaschool.com forward slash success. So these are the three steps. You have three steps and three requirements to amortize a mortgage. So our requirements Number one, we need the loan amount. Loan amount is going to be given to you in the question one way or another. They might directly say the loan is $300,000 or they might say the value of the property is $300,000 with a 50% loan to value ratio, meaning that the if the value is $300,000 and the loan to value is 50%, 300,000 times 50% gives us a $150,000 loan. So one way or another, they're gonna give you the loan amount in the question. So you always need the loan amount. Number two is the payment. Now, they're usually pretty straightforward when they give you the payment, but they can also complicate this one because when we're dealing with amortization, we only want the principal and interest payment the portion that goes towards the principal and the interest. And now you might be familiar with the concept of P-I-T-I, which stands for principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. Now again, all we want is just the principal and interest. So if they're giving this to us of a PITI payment, a principal interest taxes and insurance payment, all it is we have to do is just remove the taxes and insurance portion of this, which in case they're giving you the taxes as an annual number, which they'll always give you this information if they're including taxes and insurance in there, they might tell you that if they're really trying to make it difficult that the annual taxes are $1,200 a year, we just need to divide that by 12 to find out the monthly amount to figure out, okay, what do we need to take out for taxes and what do we have to take out for insurance to find just the principal and interest portion. Now, with the exam, there is only so difficult that they'll make a question. And they, they factor in a certain amount of time that it takes to solve a particular question. So this is a lengthy question. So they're less likely to put these little booby traps and things like that in there where you're having to do some extra work to just get the information it is that you need out of the question. But again, in theory, they could do that. So hopefully it doesn't, but if it does, remember you just have to pull out those taxes and insurance and it's really not that difficult. And then finally, the third thing it is that you need is the annual percentage rate. So the APR, the annual percentage rate. 
So those three pieces of information, the loan amount, the payment of just principal and interest, and the APR. One way or another, if not directly, somehow indirectly, where you have to figure out these numbers, you need to have these three numbers before you're able to do the amortization. And like I said, usually with these types of questions, they're pretty straightforward and just give them to you because it's already a lot of work to solve out these questions. So we've got our three steps here. And let's put this right up at the top. Let's give ourselves some numbers. Let's say we are going to do a $300,000 loan. So we've got a loan of $300,000. Let's say that interest rate, that APR, is 5%. <laughs> and then let's also say that the payment is, we'll say $2,000. And then we'll just say that's just the principal and interest payments. Don't run out of room here. So we'll say $2,000. Now, working through these steps that we've got to do, we've got the three pieces of information it is that we need. We've got our loan amount, we've got our APR, and our payment. And obviously, on the exam, they're going to give it to you in a word problem, so it's going to have a lot more words to it. But anytime you're working with these word problems, um, really, you just want to go through it, comb through it, and pull out that important information. Just write it down in your scratch paper so you don't have to keep digging through that same problem again and again and again to find these numbers that you need. So nice and simple, loan equals this, APR equals this payment equals that. Now we've got the information that we need. Now to actually calculate the amortization, so we'll start with step one, finding the monthly interest. So to find the interest, and this works for any sort of compounded interest, you start with the loan amount, which we have here is $300,000. We're going to multiply it by the APR, which is 0 0.05, and then we're going to divide that number by 12. Now, we're dividing this by 12 because you want to remember the A in APR stands for annual. So if we were to just take 300,000 and multiply it by 5%, we'd end up with our annual interest, but we're not paying our mortgage payment annually, we're paying it monthly. So when we do this calculation here, 300,000 times And another tip for the math, too, is just take your time putting this stuff in your calculator. I can't tell you how many times I've made a mistake by um, going too fast, dropping a zero or something like that. Um, so just go slowly and carefully, and you won't have that issue. So we take that 300,000 times 5% divided by 12, and we get $1,250 as our month one interest payment. So that's how much money goes towards interest in the first month. So even though you write the check for $2,000 or it gets withdrawn from your account for $2,000 for the total payment, that first $1,250, $1,250 goes to interest that you never see again. And this one actually is a pretty high payment. So this one, if we did the actual amortization, it probably would be paid off faster than 30 years with a $2,000 monthly payment on this here. And that's the benefit of these little calculators you could find online. You can just type in the numbers, hit calculate, it does it in the blink of an eye, and then it basically recalculates everything out. And figures all that stuff out um, for you to tell you how long it would take to pay off this mortgage at a 5% interest rate with a $2,000 monthly payment. So that's step number one. Now step number two, we've got to find the monthly principal payment. So remember, our payment's going to be given to us in the question. In this case, it's $2,000. So we take that $2,000 and then we're going to subtract out that $1,000. $250. Because again, remember, we're assuming our payment here is just principal and interest. And if it's not just principal and interest, you need to get the payment down to just principal and interest. And then you just subtract out whatever the interest is and what's left over is going to be the principal. So we should have here, if my mental math is correct, and always a good rule of thumb not to rely on your mental math too much um, just because you can make a mistake. But yeah, let's just double check that. 2000 minus 1250. 750, yes, yeah, so my brain is working today, but uh, don't take that chance if your brain working or not on the exam. Just put it in your calculator and you won't have to worry about that. So month one, principal payment. So now we've found our numbers, our composition of the payment for month number one. 
But like I said, on the exam now, ultimately you could do this for the full term of the mortgage, the full 30 years or 15 years or however long this mortgage is for. But on your exam, you usually only have to do two months, maybe three months. So in order to proceed now to the following month, we need to find out what the new balance is, the starting balance for month number two. And this could also be something it is they could ask about. They could ask you what the interest payment is, what the principal payment is for that certain month, or what the starting balance would be for month number two. Or they could ask you about the interest or the principal for month number two as well. So to find our new balance, now remember we started out with a $300,000 balance. So we started out owing $300,000. Now we just paid $750. We just subtracted $750. We didn't subtract $2,000 because $1,250 of that $1,250 ended up going to interest. We never see that money again except for maybe on a, a tax deduction or something like that. But as far as our mortgage goes, that money goes to the bank. That's not our money. But the portion of our payment that does go towards paying down our balance is the principal payment. That's the loan payment, the payment towards the actual loan balance. So when we do 300,000 minus 750, we end up with 299,000. Should be $250. And we'll just again double check that to make sure our mental math checks out. And you know, you might say, well, yeah, John, obviously it's $299,250. Be careful because your mind does play tricks on you and it's played tricks on mine plenty of times before as well. So trust your calculator and trust in it by putting it in slowly as well. Because these silly mistakes, you can know how to do this inside and out and this is, this is a tip that I don't want you to take for granted here. You can know this process inside and out and still make a mistake putting the numbers in your calculator or doing the mental math. So you don't want that to happen. So we've got month number one figured out. Now our new balance for month number two, because again, the exam is probably going to ask you about month number two. Number one, you take that loan balance because now when you get the bill for month number two, it's going to say you now owe, it's not 300,000, that was what you owed in month one, you now owe $299,250. And again, we repeat that same process again. We multiply by the same interest rate. When you're doing these questions for your exam, we're assuming that you have a fixed interest rate here. Now in the real world, you could possibly have an adjustable rate mortgage where this interest rate could change maybe year to year, month to month, or some pattern of how that changes. And if that were the case, then at these different points, you'd have these different interest rates that would be charged there. And that's basically all that is. But on the exam, it's even simpler than that. It's a fixed rate of interest where it's not gonna change. So we have our 5% interest. We're gonna divide that by 12. So now we do this calculation and this one, probably will not be able to do with the mental math because we'll end up with a lot of decimals here, but we just put in our calculator 299,250 times 0.05 and then divide that number by 12 and we get $1,246 and about 86 cents. It's really 0.875, but at this point you could round a dollars and cents. So we'd round up to 86 cents. Now you can see there's a drop here. We went from $1,250 in interest to now $1,246.86 in interest. And you might say, well, shouldn't there be a bigger drop in that? I mean, we did just pay it down $750. I mean, that $750 that you paid down, I mean, that's didn't even decrease at $1,000. That's just one little speck that you chipped away. But the good news is that is gonna continue to snowball. Those, those portions that go towards paying this down, that 750 is only gonna go up and this 1250, the most interest you're gonna pay if the interest rate is a fixed rate of interest like this year, is gonna be in the first month. That's where the highest percentage of interest is and it always goes downhill from there and the principal payments are always gonna go uphill. So again, that's our month two interest and you do wanna know the names of these here because it's gonna ask you for the interest or the principal or the new balance or the starting balance for month number two. So you do wanna understand not only how to do the calculation but what these numbers mean that you're figuring out here. So that's step number one. Now step number two to find the principal payment for month number two, how much I actually paid down a loan balance. I'm gonna tell you right away, it's above $750. It's not gonna go down because we have the same interest rate being charged at a lower amount. Our interest rate, our interest payment has dropped down, but our payment is still gonna be $2,000. This is a level payment plan mortgage, which means your payments are the same every single month. So we have that $2,000 payment again, and now we're gonna subtract out not 1250, but only 1,000. 
$246.86. So when we put that math in our calculator here, we've got 2,000 minus 1246 and 86 cents. We now end up with $753.14, paying down our principal. And again, that's now our month two principal payment. So in month number two, we're paying down this now $299,250 by $753.14. And then finally now, if it is asking for the starting balance of month number three or the interest or the principal for month number three, we would just move into our third step. If it's just looking for this, the what is the month two principal payment or the amount that applies to amortization or the amount that applies to the principal reduction, we've got our answer there. But again, if it's asking for month number three, whether that's the starting balance or the interest rate or the principal payment amount for month number three, it's these same three steps again. You just need to find your new starting balance. So we started the month with $299,000. $250. We just paid that down by $753.14. So our new balance now for month number three, when we plug that in our calculator, 299, 250 minus 753 and $0.14. Our balance now, we've dropped down to $298,496. And now 86 cents. And that balance is going to keep dropping down. The amount that we pay down that balance, the principal payment is going to continue to increase. The amount that goes towards interest is going to continue to decrease because now when we do month number three, the interest is going to be based off of this $298,496.86. In month number one, it was the highest because our loan balance was the highest. Then our loan balance dropped a little, so our interest dropped a little. Then when again we calculate this again, it's now based off this new balance for month number three, we again multiply by 5%, divide that by 12, and our interest rate's going to drop even further than this, which means our principal payment's going to go up. And again, this is going to continue to snowball uh, where the interest gets smaller and the principal gets bigger, and eventually you'll have the loan paid off. But that's amortization in a nutshell. And again, this is an essential piece of math to know how to do for your Florida real estate exams. Um, so remember, there's 10 questions on that math exam. And a lot of people say, oh, you know what? I'm not good at math, so I'll just figure, you know, I don't need to worry about math at all. And I don't have to do those 10 questions and I can still get a 90%. That's true. But look, the math, the great thing about the math questions is they're fairly predictable for the exam. The math questions, sometimes uh, there's, it's almost, you could, it, it, this question is almost the same. They've just changed the numbers. So when you practice these math questions, you know how to, to work with these math questions. Those are actually 10 easy points to get when you know maybe 15 or 20 different types of math to solve. Whereas when you rely on that other 90% of the stuff there, now th there's a lot of topics that they pull from and it's harder to predict how it is they'll ask about a joint tenancy or how it is that they'll ask about um, maybe one of the terms regarding mortgages or assumption of a mortgage or uh, dealing with maybe uh, which method of appraisal to use or, or all these other types of questions it is that they could pull from. So spend a little bit of time in the math because look, if you could add, if you could subtract, if you could divide and if you could multiply and look, even if you can't do that by hand, if you could do it with a calculator, you could do this math. The math, once you know what to do, and you've repeated these steps and you understand this process and what's going on here, those are 10 easy points to get regardless of your skill level and skill set in math. Look, that's all the time we've got for today. Look, if you want more exam prep tools, go to PassFirstTry.com. That link again is PassFirstTry.com. That's got a recommended strategy to pass your class and state exams on the first try. So definitely check that out, PassFirstTry.com. If you've got questions about the licensing process, maybe you've got to do post-licensing, maybe continue your education, or you just have a question about real estate, give us a call. We have our advisors standing by to help you with any questions you have and assist you in any way it is that they can. That phone number is 813. 333-2676. Remember, you can get the whole replay of today's show at tampaschool.com forward slash success. Again, that's tampaschool.com forward slash success. Um, that's going to be available as soon as the episode is over. You can watch it on demand. There's also tons of other great videos, articles, tools, calculators, and so much valuable resources available on that site. Again, that's tampaschool.com forward slash success. 
Look, that's all the time we've got for today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, and remember, Friday, we've got State of Real Estate. That's our weekly mastermind to help you grow and develop your real estate business, to get you actually making some money in real estate. So I'll see you guys on Friday at 12 noon. Until then, I'm John Christmo. You've been watching Ask the Instructor. Hey, so if you're thinking about starting a real estate career, it could feel a little overwhelming sometimes. Look, that's completely understandable. That's why we're here to help. If you haven't already, check out our success center, tampaschool.com forward slash success. Or if you don't even know where to begin, give us a call. We'd love to help you out. We've got advisors standing by to answer any questions you have and assist you in any way it is that we can. Our phone number is 813-928-0106. Again, that's 813-928-0106. Give us a call. We're the Tampa School of Real Estate. Do you want a career that allows you to be in control? With a career in real estate, you'll get to call the shots. Whether you're looking at starting part-time or want to become the next top agent, a career in real estate makes it possible. Find out what it takes at tampaschool.com. Do you want to incorporate studying for your real estate exams into your busy schedule? Now you can review the key topics you need to know to pass your class and state exams with our MP3 audio review. Simply pop in your headphones or connect to your car to reinforce crucial information while you exercise or drive. Listen to the first unit for free at mp3audioreview.com. That's mp3audioreview.com. Are you thinking about a career in real estate? Hey, I'm John Christmo with the Tampa School of Real Estate, and we've helped thousands of people just like you obtain their real estate license. If you're thinking about a career in real estate, give us a call. The phone number is 813-928-0106. Our advisors are standing by to answer any questions you have and assist you in any way they can. Hey, if you're enjoying the show today, which I'm sure you are, be sure to hit like, subscribe, post your comments, share with your friends and family. Thank you guys so much for watching.